Variable i is an object of type integer and has value 10. Variable s is an object of type string with the text hello. When the objects are printed, the output shows no surprises. But why does this work? How does the print function know what to print? Could the print function look something like this? If the object is an integer, use its number. If the object is a string, use its text. In case of a daytime, use the date and time. And so on for all the data types in Python. And of course, this switch needs to be changed any time when a new data type is introduced. And not only for the built-in data types, but also for all the classes you create. If I say it like this, it sounds pretty ridiculous, doesn't it? And that's because it is ridiculous. But that is what the world would look like without polymorphism. And after watching this video, you will understand it better and realize that you have seen it many times without even realizing it. Look at the code again. It switches on data types. When a new data type is introduced, it needs to be added to the switch. Adding a new data type causes this code to be changed in two places. This problem is known as a violation of the open-closed principle. The open-closed principle says that adding new data types should cause as little changes to the system as possible. And in this example, there is another problem. The print function is part of the Python standard library. It is highly unlikely that you are going to change that code. So when the print function cannot be changed, but you still want your objects to be printed by it, what is the solution? The answer is polymorphism. Let's get back to the first example. Here is integer i with value 10. Let's inspect the object's attributes. Here you see all attributes of type integer. This looks overwhelming, but for this tutorial there is only one method important to us. Dunder string. When print is called and receives an object, it searches in that object for a method called dunder string. Dunder string returns a printable value. Dunder string in an integer object returns its number. In a string object, its text. And dunder string in a datetime object returns a formatted date and time. And so on. What is important is that the creator of the data type decides what to return when dunder string is called. And what's even more important is that the print function is unaware of what happens in dunder string. And this is a great example of polymorphism built directly into Python. As long as the data type implements dunder string, the print function will call it and receive something printable. And now we arrived at the point where we can make it even more interesting. Because now we know what to do when your custom classes need to be printable. You already know you cannot change the print function. So the magic must happen in dunder string. Let me demonstrate this. Here is empty class employee. I create an instance and inspect it. Does it have dunder string? It does. By default, custom classes already have dunder string. The question is, what does it return? To check this, I print the object. You probably have seen this before. Python prints the type and the address of the object. So where is the polymorphism here? Print got an instance of class employee, searched for dunder string and found it. Dunder string returns the object information. This is the default behavior of class instances. But since you are the author of the employee class, you can override this behavior. To override dunder string, implement the method in the class. I create an instance of employee and print it. Here is the result. Isn't it great that the print function knows nothing about employee classes and still does the correct thing when printing an employee? Thanks to polymorphism, the print function does not need any type information and can just call the object's dunder string. Each object can decide what printable string to return. And that's all for this video. If you want to learn more, here is one of my other videos on polymorphism. Thanks for watching.